Hey everybody, it's Tuesday, May the 15th. No, it's not. It's actually Wednesday, May the 16th. I apologize for the postponement the other day. Uh, unfortunately, thanks to all the overtime I have to work, uh, well, life just got in the way. Uh, welcome to the chat room, CPC Gamer, uh, Kostya, Java King 2014, and Kibitz. Glad you guys could make it. I'm just uh, adjusting my chat room here so it's a little easier to see. Just bear with me. Uh, I have my fan on and the air conditioner because it is extremely hot today. Uh, if it's an issue, just let me know. I can move it to a more ideal location. Nope, right on time, Kibitz. Glad you guys can make it. And, uh,. So yeah, um, more Binding of Isaac. I'm sorry if anyone's sick of this game. Um, I know I'm certainly not. And the whole point of this is to play games that I like and share them with other people. So uh, this is what I like at the moment. And uh, well also, I really want to try to beat this game 10 times before the expansion. Oh crap, my screen capture's off. Damn it! You think after doing this X number of times, I'd be used to this? Hold on. Also, I just registered my uh, screen capture software, so hopefully the audio quality will be a little bit better. Um, I recently purchased a lot of relatively expensive audio equipment, a microphone and a mixer and whatnot. So, uh, once that arrives, hopefully my audio quality will be a good deal better. Alright, how's that? Is that better? It looks right on my end, but it looks right on my end before as well, so... Alright, that's better. Good. Uh, so yeah, um... My goal is to basically make this sound as good as, you know, any professional podcast that you might listen to. I think your audio quality is fine as it is. Well, you know, you guys in the chat room right now, you're my hardcore fans. You're the ones who, uh, who would come and watch me pretty much no matter what. But if I want to appeal to a wider audience and get my numbers up, then, uh, you know, I would do well to try to get the sounding as good as possible. And plus, I don't really have the best voice for this stuff. Just today, it kind of sounds windy. And that must be my fan. Let me try. Let me this. But, see, that's better. Most of the podcasters I've been with use PS2 superstar mics. Wow. I assume it's bad as a voice for somebody or something. It is, but it was before as well. Um. Wait, why are my why are my tears so big? I thought I picked up the dog head. Oh, oh! Apparently that dog head thing was a tears power up. For some reason, I thought it was a uh, an item that you throw at people. I must be confusing it with the other severed heads you're likely to find. Okay, well, good. That's much better than uh, than the zombie head or whatever. I just noticed that. Uh, that Kane was crying significantly more than he usually does. But yeah, um, you know, I'm trying to make this more accessible to people, I'm trying to make it more user friendly. Still sounds like when it's going in the mic. Damn it, okay. Is that better? The, f the fan's pointing, like, completely away from me now. Okay, good. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Smart Man, or Smarty Man. See, that's another reason that I'd like to get a condenser microphone. Because condenser mics are one-directional, unidirectional. And if I have one of those, then I can point the fan at me, you know, off at an angle, and not worry about the microphone picking up, like, the ambient sound noise. So, uh, it's on its way now. Definitely better audio. Good. It was uh, it was like 15 bucks for a three-month license, 
for XSplit, the streaming software that I use. Which, I mean, I guess it isn't horrible. Uh, welcome Mace Moore, Sir Mace of the Black Legion. Should I know who that is? Is that your WoW guild? Because it does not ring a bell. Uh, welcome, Swamp Tony BYD. Glad you can make it. Uh, if I had any bombs, I'd go around looking for secret exits, but I don't, so I will simply progress to the next level. I have a key, I could go to the item store if I really wanted to, but uh, I'd rather save it, since I only have four coins anyway. It wouldn't really be much point. Uh, welcome to the chat room, for the love of NES. I have this Hierophant card. I think this one... Isn't this one... It spawns Soul Hearts, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Am I going to get Wrath of the Lamb? Hell yeah! Day one purchase for me. In fact, the day that it comes out, I have that day off. Because it's, uh... Some holiday. Labor Day, or Memorial Day, or... One of those made-up holidays. I'm the only person who gets your name right. That seems pretty straightforward to me. I don't see how else it could be it could be pronounced. But yeah, it comes out on the 28th, and I have that day off, so I'm I'll probably do a special uh, Monday stream to celebrate the arrival of the new DLC. Assuming it's not delayed or anything. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. So. uh... Again, apologies for yesterday. Uh, what happened was, I uh, I was going to do laundry on Monday. This is so, so entertaining. Um, oh, just a slot machine. I was going to do laundry on Monday, but uh, I ended up not being able to. So uh, I had to do it on Tuesday instead. And I have to go to the laundromat. I don't have, my apartment doesn't have hookups for a washer and dryer, so... Going to the la to the laundromat is a you know it's a big ordeal. Such a perfect time for a Duke stream. Welcome, Pokemon 420. You know what? I don't think I want to say your username anymore. It makes me uncomfortable every time I say it. So for now from now on, I'm going to call you Josh. Pokemon 420. Your your name is now Josh. Welcome back, Swamp Tony dude. Uh, welcome, Chanticleer, to the chat room. I actually know the real names of a couple people in the chat room, uh, because they liked me on Facebook. Should just call him Isaac. So uncomfortable, just call me Chris. Okay, Chris. Thank you. That's much more pleasant to say than post mod for 20. I mean, now that I have a problem with, you know, recreational drug use, it's just, uh, you know, th th this is a family podcast. I don't want any fucking kids to see that shit. I call this a podcast. This isn't a podcast, it's a stream. Although I suppose if you really wanted to, you could, uh, you could download the YouTube video as a podcast. But I mean, it's not like my name is Shoot Heroin. Yeah, that's true. That would be significantly worse. Been subscribed to you si since way back when you were doing the Lost Vikings LP. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Jace's. Or Jace Z. Not to be confused with Jay Z. But yeah, if any of you aren't following me on uh, on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, really anything else you want to subscribe to me on, you should really do so. Because, you see, life is like an RPG. And right now, I'm grinding up my, uh, my dialogue skill. Well, I mean, technically my monologue skill, I guess. Well, no, this is the dialogue. I mean, I'm responding to people in the chat room. So yes, I am grinding up my dialogue skill, and as my numbers go up, 
it is uh, it is accompanied by my real life numbers going up, and those numbers are my Twitch numbers, my Facebook numbers, my Twitter numbers, etc. I guess I should probably hit that item room, huh? I don't know why I did not do that before. Ooh! Charm of the Vampire. One of the more useful items. Plus one to conjugations. Yes. I am leveling up my abilities as I speak. Welcome to the chat room, Private Steve. Glad you can make it. But yes, in instead of experience points, I have uh, ego points. And those are directly correlated with the number of followers I get on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch. So if you haven't already, click the links down underneath the video and subscribe and make me feel better about this ridiculous hobby that I do. I don't ask you guys for much. You know, I'm not begging for donations or anything. And, you know, I won't bring it up all the time. Uh... Yeah, I guess I'm ready to fight the boss. Okay. I should use this, uh, this Empress card. Oh. I thought the Empress was the, uh, the one that summoned Mom's foot down. Yeah, I'll go back for the chests. I didn't have any bombs at the time, so... I didn't get them immediately. Was this the Empress card, or did I totally misread that? I'm slightly scatterbrained today. It happens occasionally. I assume the damage increased with the size as well. Yeah, the the uh, card that I use um, gives you a temporary boost to damage and speed and a couple other abilities, I believe. Sweet! Health up! One of the better pills you can get. You know, I've noticed that uh, if you get one pill, it's pretty likely that you're go that you're going to get more of the same in the same playthrough. And I'm not really sure why that is. If that's just something specific to Kane, or if it's just a uh, a flaw in the random number generator. But it seems like if I get a health pill my chances of getting more health pills in the same game greatly go up. So yeah, I've beaten this eight times so far. And I have one more time... If I beat it one more time, I get all the Steam achievements for number of times beating the game. It's not 100%ing the game, but it's probably as good as I'm going to do. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Almond12345. Hey, that's the same password as my luggage. Every playthrough, a specific set of pill types are available. Some pills may not be in that set. Oh. Well, that's kind of disappointing. I'd rather, uh... I'd rather have the full pool of, of pills available. Not an OCD 100%er. I probably would be if I was better at video games. But I'm not that good. I mean, I'm probably good enough to beat the game ten times, but, uh, I'm not going to get the achievements for, like, beating, beating the caves without taking any damage. I mean, shit, I can't even beat the basement without taking any damage. So, as much as I'd like to 100% the game, I've accepted my fate that it's probably not going to happen. And all in one, two, three, four, five left. Oh well. Damn it. I blew my chance to impress Almond12345. That's good, you enjoy your games more that way. Yeah, and speaking of uh, being a 100%er, I beat Bastion recently, which I talked about in a recent stream. Man, really excellent game. I played it when it came out. Apparently, it just came out last year. For some reason, I thought it was. I thought it came out in 2010. But, uh, it actually came out around the same time as this game. But, uh, when it came out, I played the, uh, the demo on Xbox Live. And, you know, I thought it looked cool. The art and the music style 
the art style and the music were really awesome, and you know the story seemed cool, but uh, I totally misjudged the uh, the gameplay from the demo because what happened was I ended up getting the first gun, uh, the Fang Repeater, and at that point in those early early levels, you can pretty much just hold on to the lock on button and hold on to the fire button, and you know you're pretty much unstoppable. Just you know dodge around and. You know, you don't even have to aim or anything. Uh, welcome to this chat room, Seth Klyan. But, uh, I thought, oh, okay, well, this looks neat, but the gameplay doesn't really seem that deep or anything. And, uh, I didn't really check it out past the demo. But, man, was I wrong. There's so much more to that game, to the combat, than it appears on the surface. I mean, I thought it was a hell of a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm sorry I didn't play the game sooner. But, uh, the one thing I'm bad at is doing the, uh, the training grounds, or whatever they call it, where you, uh, it basically teaches you how to use each weapon, and there are three levels of reward that you can get based on how, how could you do in those training levels. And uh, I could do most of them, but the ones that are, like, time trials, I just suck at completely. Like, I could never be a speedrunner. I am not the kind of person uh, who's able to do time trials. So, uh, I mean, not all of the training grounds are time trials. Some of them are, uh, are you know, more skill-based rather than just doing something in a set amount of time. So I was able to do most of them, but uh, I wasn't able to do the machete or the, uh, what was the other one? I couldn't, I couldn't do the hammer. And I couldn't do the uh, the spear or whatever, the uh, the pole arm. And I pretty much just had to accept it. Uh, welcome to the chat room, I Silver Six Three Nine. Glad you can make it. Why aren't I playing Diablo Three? Well, I haven't bought it, and I'm interested in buying the game and playing it, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if the game would be worth sixty dollars to me. I mean, a I'm not really much of a multiplayer gamer, and most of the fun in a Diablo game comes from the multiplayer. And B, um, well, I'm looking forward to, uh, to Torchlight 2 as well. And that game is only $20, and it's pretty much the same kind of game as, uh, as Diablo 3. I mean, I mean, I know that they're different, they're not comparable, but, you know, it, it, it scratches the same itch want a guest pass uh sure how long is that for I actually enjoy single player more in some ways the problem is more that I can't play single player offline yeah I mean that's another thing um it's kinda shitty a blizzard to do the whole you know have to be online to play the single player portion I mean I understand why they did it with the auction house where you can actually sell items that you find in the game for real money they have to be like super they have to have a super tight grip on you know hacking and piracy and all that and doing everything on the server side is pretty much the only way you can guarantee that that's not going to be abused but it's still kind of I don't know it's kind of shitty uh, let's look for secret rooms before I continue the lag spikes in single player is annoying. Yeah, I mean, I've heard, uh, especially with like as shitty as the uh, the servers have been, like people, you know, lagging out of the game playing single player. It sounds really, an really annoying. If I play Diablo three, it's I'm probably going to uh, to wait on it. You know, wait until they get all the server issues hammered out, and wait until you know wait until the, sing the single player experience is, isn't annoying because of the online stuff. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Galen O'Reilly. Uh, I suppose... Well, I could go I could go by the Dead Sea Scrolls, I guess. I don't have a uh, an activated item yet. I doubt it'll ever be. Yeah, I mean, that's what worries me. Um... 
And I mean, that's why I'd rather play Torchlight 2. Because I enjoyed Torchlight 1, and I'm hoping... I'm hoping that, uh... That Torchlight 2 fixes some of the issues I have with Torchlight 1. And, you know, it's a third of the price, so... That's an incentive right there. My problem with spacebar items is that I usually play Isaac, and I never want to get rid of the D6. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Saya Chan and Chibi UFO. Haven't seen you recently, Chibi. Glad you can make it. D6. Does I. Did. Isaac doesn't start with an item, does he? He never started with one when. when I was playing Isaac before. It's probably something you have to unlock, I guess. Uh, let's go ahead and use this shit. Oh. Wow, I can just totally bypass this boss. I don't think I will though because this this is a uh, well I mean it's a harder version of Chubb but any version of Chubb is easier than you know some of the other bosses so I will go on ahead and fight him just just to get the item but yeah like I was saying about Bastion I'm probably going to do the new game plus on the stream I was hesitant I'm always hesitant, hesitant to stream a game that I haven't played yet, just because I feel like if I'm not familiar with a the game, then the commentary is going to suffer. I mean, I know it can be fun to see a, a blind playthrough of some games, but uh, I'm very self-conscious about the quality of my commentary, and I don't like having a lot of dead air, so I'd rather stream a game that I'm familiar with. Once you beat the devil with a certain character, the D6 is the best item in the game. Wow. Oh, you have to beat the game with question mark, question mark, question mark? Yeah, I'm probably never going to do that. I mean, even if I unlock that character, from what I've heard, I'm not going to want to play as him. Because he's like, uh... He's like Judas. Where, in, in that, he's, uh, he's very crippled. Uh, alright. No hearts on this level, so I guess I will just continue. D6 rerolls a room's item. Wow. That's pretty good. I can see why you wouldn't want to give that up. But yeah, now that I've beaten uh, Bastion, I really want to do the new game plus, because uh, I only made it to like level 6. Well, my character was only level 6, and I'd like to, uh, to level him up all the way, and, uh, and, you know, do some of the stuff that I haven't done in the game before, like, upgrade all the weapons and stuff like that, and, uh, another reason I didn't want to stream the game is because of the narration, it's so good, and I just don't want to talk over it, but, uh, I figure if I put the subtitles on, then, for anyone who hasn't played Bastion yet, you know, that, that would be good enough. But it's a really fun game. I really enjoyed it. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Oxbo. People who have played them sometimes are tempted to game the system otherwise. Only if RPGs don't involve grinding. I think I like blind runs for RPGs with character decision picks. Yeah, that could be fun. But yeah, like you said, as long as it doesn't involve a lot of grinding. But I don't know. I'm weird. I like... If I'm interested in a game, and the people doing commentary are people I like, then I really don't mind watching grinding. Like, uh, I'm watching the, uh, the Persona 4 Giant Bomb Endurance run right now. Ooh. Very nice. And, uh, you know, I'll just watch a whole episode where they do nothing but grind for experience, basically. And, uh, I mean, I should find it boring, but, you know, the, I mean, the combat's interesting enough in that game that I just don't really have a problem with it. At least I find it interesting. But I, I can see why people would have a problem with that. Which is probably a reason I'll never do, uh, do an RPG on the stream. Although, what I've been considering is doing the usual streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays, where, you know, you can expect good commentary and games that are well-suited to streaming, like The Binding of Isaac, 
And then on other days, if I'm playing an RPG, I'll just turn the stream on and, uh, you know, I won't worry as much about keeping the commentary good or playing a game suited for the stream. But, I mean, if I'd be playing a game anyway, then I figure I might as well, you know, t turn on the camera, so to speak. And if anyone's interested in, uh, in seeing what I'm playing, then, you know, they can check it out. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, would you want me to do that? Like, say say I did start playing Diablo 3. I'm not the most interesting game to stream, since it's pretty much nothing but grinding. But, uh... I mean, if I was playing it anyway, I could just stream it and, uh... You know, I wouldn't talk as much as I do during my normal streams, since I haven't played the game yet and, you know, I want to focus on the game. But, uh, it, it might be fun. I don't know. I'd like to wait until I get my new audio equip equipment to do that, since, uh... Man, I'm not, I'm not doing so good on health this round. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Ultimos. Half Minute Hero. I played that very briefly when I had a PSP, and, uh... I didn't really get it. I, I probably didn't put enough time into it. Given my lousy time zone, I'm still going to stick to LP. The game... It's a game reserved exclusively for Europeans. Your streams are the only stream I ever watch. Oh, thank you. I'd watch Torchlight 2. I've been playing Diablo 3 for two days now, and I really wouldn't like seeing a live stream of it. Yeah, that's why I would never do a game like that for my regular stream. For my Tuesday or Thursday streams. But, you know, I might do it just as an extra, you know, cool thing. What would be really fun is if I played Diablo 3, streamed it, and had someone on Sp Skype. Like, Mike can hang out and bullshit with me or whatever. Yeah, I mean, that would be cool. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, multiplayer games that we can play for the Sunday stream. I like only two LP years. Duke is one of them. Thank you. Do Tuesday is a roguelike arcade type game, and Thursday is doing RPG. I continue every week. How about net play? Yeah, uh, that's a uh, that's a possibility. I mean, again, I guess I should have gone to the item room before I came in here, huh? Again, I wouldn't really want to do a uh, a blind stream stream of a blind game like that because when we were doing the uh, like when we did Second Samurai, for example, that was a lot of fun. But there was also a lot of practicing and shit that you didn't see in the actual videos that uh, that I cut out. And on the stream, if damn another health up, wow. And on the stream, if we never played the game before, ooh, that's pretty good. On the stream, if we never played the game before, then it would, there would be a lot of trial and error involved. Isaac is endlessly entertaining to watch. Well, thank, I, I'm glad you think so, because I find it endless, endlessly entertaining to play. Now, once I get my mixer, Mike can just come over, and we can do, uh... I mean, we can just record in real time. We wouldn't have to do it over Skype or anything. Which I would be more interested in doing it that way than, than over the Intertron. I've seen all of Duke's streams of it, and all of Northern Lions, like 140 playthroughs. I take it that's another streamer, or another lp -er. Oh shit, it's Lust. Definitely the easiest of the seven sin bosses to deal with. Unless you're, you know, slow or crippled or something. He must really like Binding of Isaac a lot. Yeah, I would say so. I don't know if even I could take that much from BOI. Pestilence! Book of Revelations. Uh, I forget what that does. Oh, I, I guess he gave me, uh... Yeah, that gives you a uh, soul heart every time you use it. Okay. Well, a damage dealing item would have been more useful here, but uh, I'll take what I can get. This is 
not the hardest of the horsemen by far. I'd say it's probably the easiest. Although this uh, this green acid vomit can be kind of nasty sometimes. Ow. Stupid maggot. So yeah, on Thursday I'll probably stream Bastion and start a new game plus if nobody objects. It'll be a while till I have my uh, my new audio equipment, so it won't uh, it won't improve for probably about a week before I get everything. And it's a cube of meat. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Daza W. Misnomer is the Baca Revelation. Horsemen only draw cubes of meat. Yeah, well, except for the headless horseman. He drops the pony, which is amazing. Alright, everyone seems cool with, uh, with Bastion. So that's probably what, uh, what Thursday will, will involve. Sorry, I have ants, and I'm checking my drink very carefully to make sure there aren't any dead ants floating in it. Oh, summertime. How I loathe you. I'd agree on anything, even Minesweeper. Well, I am terrible at Minesweeper, so you probably would not want to watch that. Okay, my drink is safe. You, yeah, ants are pretty shitty, but it could be worse. It could be cockroaches. And when I was a kid, I lived in houses with cockroaches, and that was some horrible, disgusting shit. Ants are relatively tame by comparison, unless you get the big ants that like have wings and can fly. What are those? The female ants? Or the male ants. I think the regular ants are the female ones, and the ones with wings are the male ants. Those are pretty fucking gross. I mean, it's not a huge ant problem, luckily. I just see one every now and then. I just have to be diligent about rinsing out my glasses after I use them, not leaving any food out or anything. Workers are female. Welcome to Ant Talk with Duke of the Bump. This is my video game slash ant podcast. Glad you can make it. On today's discussion, which ants are the female ones? Shit. I hate the knights. So after I beat Bastion in search of a game to play, I started up Skyrim again. More because I could than anything, because I was in the middle of playing Skyrim when my uh, when my video card fucked up several months ago, and uh, I thought I'd pick it up again and try to actually beat the game. And uh, I don't know if I'll be able to continue that game, because it's actually pretty damn boring. I mean, I like the open world aspect of it. I like the uh, I like the exploration. You know, it's a beautiful world to explore. That part of the game is really cool. But the combat and the story are just so it's drudgery. I mean, playing that game immediately after I played Bastion, I just realized, oh, welcome to the chat room, Minecrafter Field. Glad you could make it. But after playing Bastion, I just realized I was having so much more fun with the combat in Bastion than anything I was doing in Skyrim. I mean, in Bastion, you, uh... You have the, uh... I mean, it's much more of an action RPG 
that's for damn sure. You have a you roll out of the way like in like in a Devil May Cry game or something, and you have a shield that you can pop up, and if you block an attack at just the right second, it does a counter attack against the enemy. And there are so many weapons you can use, so much variety, and different strategies you have to employ with the different weapons. Whereas in Skyrim, I've pretty much been doing the same thing the entire time I play the game. As soon as I learned Firebolt, the destruction spell, I've used that pretty much ex exclusively, like 90% of the game. The only thing worth pu putting points into on the skill tree is destruction, because that's all you have to do. Just walk backwards and use Firebolt. That's it. I mean, I use a Warhammer too, sometimes, just to mix things up a little bit. But, uh... But that, I mean, that's not fun either. You just walk up to the enemy, click the mouse button, and then walk backwards. Skyrim is basically glorified Oblivion. Yeah, I never played Oblivion. I really liked, uh, Fallout 3 and Fallout New, New Vegas. Um... Although, in retrospect, I don't know if I could go back to those games either. Uh, welcome to the chat room, BakerBot. You can do anything in Skyrim and succeed. Yeah, exactly. Morrowind was awesome back in the day. That's what I hear. And I've tried to, uh... I never played that one. Either. Ooh! Yumheart. Definitely trade my, uh... My scrolls for that. But I, I tried to go back and play uh, Morrowind, and it's pretty rough. If I like action RPGs, I should really play Terra Nygma. Yeah, I, I've heard good things about that game. Never actually tried it. But yeah, I think I'm done with Skyrim. And an another thing, the story and the characters are just so dull! Oh my god! It's like... The, uh, one of the big draws of, uh, of Skyrim is that, you know, all the characters are voice acted, and all, all of the dialogue is voice acted, and, you know, there are multiple voice actors, unlike in Oblivion, and, uh, you know, it's supposed to really make the story come alive, you know, but it doesn't. I can give two shits about any character in Skyrim, whereas in Bastion, there are four characters in the whole game, and only one of them ever talks. And I care way more about those characters than any character in Skyrim. And the, the story is cooler too. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Maniac. Oh God, Maniaco do Macado. Forgive me if I butchered that. But yeah, I mean, in Skyrim, you have this huge open world, and, you know... Oh, welcome to the chat room, Merkvirgidritz. A.K.A. the guy with a name I will never be able to pronounce. Guy or girl. I should not make assumptions. But yeah, I, I think I'm done with Skyrim. I mean, Bastion is really linear. That's... I mean, if you have any complaint about the game... That's probably the only complaint you can really level against it. And, you know, in in Skyrim, you have this huge open world world to explore, and you can go anywhere you want. But, uh, the linearity just really doesn't... That's not an issue for me. It does not detract from my enjoyment from the, of the game one bit. Linearity is not a bad thing. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look at Half-Life 2. One of the best first-person shooters ever made. And, well, and the original Half-Life, too. I mean, very linear games, very guided experiences, which all Valve games kind of tend to be. Uh, Portal's the same way. But, uh, you know, they're acclaimed as being some of the best games ever made. So, I mean, having a big open world to explore certainly has, has its charms. Uh... But other things are more important in in determining whether I'll enjoy a game or not. Linearity is a great way to tell a story. Yeah, I mean... Ooh. This is new. I will have to carefully and strategically place my bomb so as not to uh, waste any getting through this room. Okay. 
and there's an X marks the spot, spot block over there as well. Linear or not, it doesn't matter, it is like two different genres. But yeah, I mean, I, I'm kind of comparing apples and oranges here. But I mean, in a way I'm not, because they're both action RPGs, at, at their cores, and... Bastion is a more enjoyable action RPG than, uh, than Skyrim. I hate to say it, since I spent $60, oh shit, $60 on Skyrim. And, you know, I didn't pay for Bastion, but if I did, uh, it would have cost me $6. And, uh, I, I mean, call me crazy, I just don't think Skyrim is ten times as entertaining as Bastion for the price. But, I mean, Skyrim is the only game I bought new and paid full price for in ages. I think the last game I paid full price for was, was Doom 3 when it came out, actually. I totally agree with you, Duke. Of course you do, I'm fucking awesome. And I am correct. But anyway, yeah, that's my big anti-Skyrim rant. I was joking, by the way, I'm not really that conceited. I just happen to, uh, have strong opinions about these things. Go hit the shop. I heard Doom 3 was pretty bad. At the time, Let's see, how old was I when Doom 3 came out? I think it was 18. Yeah, it came out in 2003, and that's the year I graduated. So yeah, I had just turned 18 when, Do when Doom 3 came out. And uh, I enjoyed it at the time, but that was before I had even played the original Half-Life. And, uh, and I didn't play Half-Life 2 until years after it came out. And it wasn't until after I played those games that I realized that Doom 3 just isn't that good. I mean, I try to go back to it. I mean, it's a shame, because I really used to like id. I mean, every game that id made before Doom 3 is awesome. Up to and including, uh, you know, Quake 3 and Return to Castle Wolfenstein. But, I mean, now that I've played the Half-Life games, it occurs to me just how underwhelming Doom 3 actually is. I mean, it looks it looks gorgeous at the time, and I mean, it still holds up pretty well. But uh, yeah, it is not a good game. I hate to say, Doom Three was the first of the big three that redefined how games look. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely uh, definitely pushed the graphics technology, which you know it has always done. Was pondering buying Skyrim, but still resisting. I wouldn't. I. uh... I mean, I don't know what, what... What does Skyrim cost now? It's probably down to like 40 bucks or something. If I would recommend any... Uh, any Bethesda game... Well, actually, it's not even really a Bethesda game. It's a... Uh, oh, what's that company? Uh, Fallout New Vegas. Uh, whatever company made that. Have I seen the video of the guy speedrunning Half-Life 1 in less than 30 minutes? No, but I mean, I'm sure it's possible. These speedrunners are pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, I have plenty of keys, why not? Ooh. Oh. I could... This like makes your shots come back towards you or something, doesn't it? But if I remember correctly, it's kind of a, uh... It kind of messes with your range. I don't, I don't think I'll pick that up. I'll get this card, though. Ooh, death. Nice. Welcome to the chat room, Studwell. It's pretty funny looking. Friedman's running around like a bat out of hell using grenades to propel himself over, over huge gaps and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for speedrunners. Um... You know, I like, uh, I watch ROM Scout's streams, and, uh, I watch Ultra J-Man practice his speedrun stuff, and, uh, I definitely appreciate the patience and the skill it takes to, uh, to speedrun. It's just not something I would ever be able to do. I mean, like I said, I can't even do the timed, uh, the timed, uh, practice rooms in Bastion. I mean, I, I would never be able to speedrun anything. 
Some people are boycott boycotting Dark Souls on the PC because it's games for Windows Live. I don't really care about games for Windows Live. Yeah, me either. Um, if I remember correctly, it installed games for Windows Live when I installed Fallout New Vegas. And, uh, oh shit. Oh fuck, he wasn't on the screen when I used the death card, so nothing happened. But yeah, I, I never had an issue with GWL. Oh shit. I don't like this version of Monstro. I don't like that vomiting blood attack that goes across the entire screen. It's the same attack that, uh, that Gluttony has that goes across the entire screen. Oh shit! It's the same attack that, uh, that Gluttony has that goes across the entire screen. I hear myself oh, shit. in my headphones. The same attack that, uh, that Gluttony has that goes across the entire screen. I hear myself oh, shit. in my headphones. The same attack that, uh, that Gluttony has that goes across the entire screen. I hear myself shit in my headphones. The same attack that, uh, that Gluttony has that goes across the entire screen. I hear myself oh, shit. Shut up! Oh, man. I don't know why that happened. I had the uh, I had the window open with uh, with the stream, so I could set a title and everything. But I, I I wasn't playing the video in the window, and I don't know why it suddenly started playing. And you really wanna fuck with your mind? Try talking while hearing yourself on a five second delay. It is not a very pleasant experience. You know, I read an article a while back about somebody inventing like a silence gun. Like, it's, I mean, it's not a gun, it's a device and you point at people. And what it does is it records their voice and it plays it back to them on like a small delay. And uh, it's, it's like the human brain isn't able to deal with the feedback and it's impossible to keep talking while, while you hear that. And it's supposed to be used for like riot control and stuff. Like you go into the crowd and you uh, and you use it to shut people up, but uh, it's a pretty interesting concept. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Talon Storm or Talon Storm, Scared Helmet, uh, and Level Shrimp. Glad you can make it. Uh, let's see, Duke, you have to take that piece of video and put it up there on its own. <laughs> All you other dudes get the fuck out. Bant! So much for lurking. Oh, you can still lurk. I just say hello to everyone who joins the stream. You don't have to chat, but it is appreciated. Oh, you know what? I never typed anything in the chat room to sync it up with the subtitles later. I'll have to do it manually. That's a pain. Uh, anything else I want to do on this level? I guess I can go back and get some of those hearts. So, uh, the Double Fine Kickstarter. Did anyone else here contribute to that? The second, uh, the second docu documentary video went up a couple days ago. And, uh, it's really good. If you didn't, uh, if you didn't back the Kickstarter when it was happening, uh, they're letting late people, uh, or late arrivals, pay the uh, the fifteen dollar backer level and still have access to the videos. You, you don't have any of the higher level tiers, like the physical re rewards or anything, but you can. You, uh, I don't think it even has to be fifteen dollars. I mean, I think you can donate anything and get access to the videos. But uh, the documentary is just really interesting. I mean, even if I wasn't getting a game, I, I backed it at the $15 level. And even if I wasn't getting a game at the end, I think it, it would be worth it for a uh, for a series of documentary videos about uh, about Tim Schafer and Double Fine. Because, I mean, Tim Schafer is just a really damn cool dude. You kind of wonder why nobody made a docu documentary about him before. What's a Kickstarter? Are you serious? It's only the uh, video game phenomenon sweeping the nets. 
Well, Duke beat this run. Place your bets. Uh, looks looks good. Uh, nobody but us cool people bought his games. Is why. Yeah. See, I I feel kind of bad about that because the only double fine games I bought are uh, Psychonauts, which I did not get that far in. I got stuck fairly early in the game, and uh, Trenched, which I love, but uh, it came out really recently after. You know, after Double Fine kind of became a cult hit. And I don't think Tim Chaper really had anything to do with Trenched. They were just uh, other people at Double Fine uh, working on side projects. But I never played uh, any of the other games Tim Chaper worked on. Any of the adventure games or anything. I never played Monkey Island or uh, Grim Fandango or, or anything like that. Not because I don't like adventure games, because I do. Just because I never really heard of any of those games until recently. Stream Psychonauts will help if you get stuck. Well, it's not. It, it wasn't a matter of not <clears throat> of not knowing where to go. I just really had trouble with one of the. Uh, you should link their site on your YouTube vid when you upload it later. Who's Double Finds? Anyway, uh, the part in Psychonauts I got stuck on was a, uh, it was a mechanical issue. It was me not being able to, uh, not being able to beat a boss or something. Welcome to the chat room, Monothu. Glad you could make it. But I enjoyed what I played in Psychonauts up to that point. I mean, the writing was excellent. I'm just, I'm no good at 3D platformers, is the, is the thing. When it comes to platformers, I am more of a two-dimensional kind of guy. But yeah, I never played any of uh, Tim Schafer's or Double Fine's. Well, I guess Double Fine never really made adventure games. That was all the LucasArts days. Uh, but uh, I'm looking forward to Double Fine Adventure. And I mean, I do intend to go back and play Monkey Island and Grim Fandango and all that one of these days. Just I, I just have such a huge backlog of games that I have not gotten around to it yet. But yeah, Tim Schafer, man, he is he is a funny, cool dude to watch. In the most recent episode of the uh, of the documentary, uh, which really professional documentary by the way. I mean, the editing is great. You know, it looks like. Well, I mean. It looks like a professional production. Something about the third dimension that messes up your jumping. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've just never really enjoyed a 3D platformer. Oh, I, uh, I have the uh, the miner's helmet, which shows me where uh, where the secret rooms are. Whoa! Glitch. Dude just disappeared off the screen. The Leisure Suit Larry Kickstarter opens with Al saying, Hey, I'm legendary game creator Tim Shalo. <laughs> that's funny. That's that's another game I never really played. Ooh, one up mushroom. Nice. The only other video game Kickstarter I've backed is uh, the Shadowrun one. Because I was a huge, huge fan of, uh, still am, a huge fan of Shadowrun on the Sega Genesis. And uh, any other Shadowrun RPG, I would be definitely inter interested in playing. I never played uh, Wasteland, so I, di I didn't back the Wasteland Kickstarter. And there are a few other video game Kickstarters that look kind of interesting, but uh, nothing... I've n nothing I'm really willing to back yet. Welcome to the chat room, Sir Clean 189. The Shadowrun FPS on the 360 was awesome. I assume you're being sarcastic because that game was not well received. And I mean, it might have been good, but even if it was good, it it didn't really have much to do with Shadowrun from what I saw of it. The world uh, that one deals damage to everything on the screen, and I think it heals you and gives you a map. Super innovative innovative and whatnot. 
Well, I mean, Shadowrun is an RPG system, and uh, I was really disappointed that uh, when, when I found out they were making a new Shadowrun game, I was just super sad that it wasn't an RPG, and I, I kind of never paid attention to it. But if you never play Shadowrun on, on the Sega Genesis, anyone watching this, I, I definitely recommend giving it a giving it a shot. You know, go find a ROM or something. There was a Super Nintendo version that I heard was also good, but the one I grew up with was the Genesis one. Did so many things that no other game at that time ever did. I mean, it was the first like sandbox game that I ever really played. I mean, it was super, uh, you know, super open, and the the hacking mini game, the Matrix, is just the best. It's the best hacking mini game in any in any video game ever made. I should LP the Genesis Shadowrun. I've considered it. Um, I don't know. Again, tin bombs. Yeah, why not? Again, I, I'm really hesitant to. Uh, to stream or LP an RPG. I mean, Shadowrun is, is an action RPG, and it doesn't really have any any grinding so grinding per se. Well, I guess it does have grinding, but it's not it's not like random battles. It's doing missions over and over again to make money, which uh, you know, I mean, it might be interesting for some people, but uh, I think the majority of people wouldn't be interested. If you want to see a really good Genesis Shadowrun, look up Grimith R on YouTube, G R I M I T H R, and uh, he does all kinds of crazy stra strategy games and RPGs and shit. And uh, his commentary is, is always really good, but uh, the Genesis Shadowrun LP that he did is it's, it's quite good. Better, he did the game justice better than I could, definitely. I haven't watched much of his other stuff, just because it's he hasn't done many games that I'm really interested in. But uh, I mean, he has a great voice for uh, for LPs, and I mean, he really knows his shit too. God, would you people die already? Jesus Christ! I have to to use my world card just to get rid of these guys. They're normally not this hard to kill, it's just these guys are so fast. I can't, uh... I can't focus fire on them like I can with the slow ones. The one eye version of these guys are, uh... are way faster than, than the, the normal version. God, look at all the blood in this room. Jesus Christ. Wow, a heart. Awesome. Drop the world card and take the death one instead. The world just uncovers the map. Oh, I'm thinking of Sun. That's the one that uncovers the map and does all the extra stuff. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Master Shake and Bake. Very clever. Keep the world for the later levels. Uh, yeah, good idea. Deceased Crab did the SNES version. Yeah, I remember that. I never, never watched that. Because I never, uh... I never actually played the Super Nintendo version. I just heard it was good. Uh, oh, item shop. Definitely want to check that shit out. Thanks for mentioning Grimithar. He apparently did a lot of stuff I actually am interested in watching. If you have any interest at all in, uh, in strategy games, in uh, old school PC RPGs, anything like that, go check his channel out. Because he has done a lot of stuff. He is probably the most prolific lp -er I've ever seen. Except maybe RPG Genie. Grimithar is kinda like RPG Genie, but uh, I enjoy his commentary more. Uh, welcome to the chat room, 0252. Is that the Bible? Yeah, that was the uh... Well actually, I don't know, was it the Bible or the Book of Revelations? Because if it's the Book of Revelations, that uh, all that does, well, it's actually better than the, the Yumheart because it spawns a uh, 
it spawns a soul heart instead of a regular heart, and you can accumulate those more. Oh, it is the Bible. I don't actually know what the Bible does. Do, does anyone in the chat room know? Is it worth taking over the Yum Heart? Kills mom instantly? Ooh. That's pretty good. I think I'll try it out. The Bible gives you wings and kills mom instantly. Sweet. Oh, you get an achievement too. Hell yeah. I'm all about those Chivos. Ugh. Why do I do that to myself? It's like I set off. I set out to deliberately annoy myself. Which you should be unlocking this playthrough, by the way. What should I be unlocking? I won't be able to go back and get it after killing Mom. Yeah, that's true. Better to get it now. Uh... Nah, screw it. Alright, let's do this. Sweet! A halo. Thank you, chat room, for... Uh, giving me this information. Oh, cool, I'm headless, too. Or not headless, but I'm, uh... I'm, it has the same effect as the as the headlessness. It might also work on mom's heart. I hope so. Apparently the Bible does not work on Satan. I will keep that in mind. I heard a secret. So, uh, oh, I was talking about, uh, I was talking about uh, the double, oh man, another one? Fuck you, guy. I was talking about the, uh, the Double Fine Adventure Kickstarter. Um, the most amusing part of the most recent episode, if you haven't watched it yet, was, uh, Tim Schafer was going through some of his old notebooks that, uh, uh, he he, uh, he writes out all these notebooks longhand when he like brainstorms ideas for his games and stuff, and uh, he says that it helps with the creative process. And he had his notebook from where he was working on Grim Fandanga, and he was just writing out just page after page of ideas for the name of the game, like uh, you know lots of names involving the Grim Reaper, uh, you know Grim Adventure, Grim you know whatever, Death such and such, and uh, and then on one page, apparently he had the idea suddenly because it just says Grim Fandango in huge letters, you know, circled multiple times. Uh, it, it was pretty funny. Oh, CPC, or is Andy leaving? CPC Gamer? Alright, night. Talk to you later, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, Prerequisite plug: Everyone follow CPC Gamer on YouTube for uh, CPC games and others. The stars. That all that does is teleport you to the secret room, I think. No, no, just a random teleport. Oh, Moon's the one that teleports you to the secret room. Or actually, is stars a random teleport, or does it teleport you to the boss? So if it teleports you, well, the room before the boss, because if, if that's the case, that's a pretty good item for the womb. Because of course in the womb there's no, uh, there's no item room or item shops or anything, so you have no reason not to just go straight to the boss. Oh uh, yeah, everyone follows CPC Gamer on YouTube. He's good people. Killing the beggar increases the chance of Satan room appearing. I did not know that. If I ever want to uh, to get some of those achievements, the womb has arcades. Yeah, but uh, nah, I don't really. I mean, I'm doing great on health and everything. I would like to go back and get that death card, though. 
I missed the compass. Are you sure? I thought I picked it up. It's not showing up on the map. There's no, uh, there's no star. Yeah, no I didn't. That is a falsehood, and it is slanderous, and I demand an apology. I will go back for the death card, though. I'll use it on whatever the boss of this level is, and then on the next level, I'll use the Bible on Mom's heart. See, I always, I always got the Bible confused with the Book of Revelations, and I never really picked up or tried the Bible, because I always, uh, I always had better stuff. So, uh, that's a good discovery. Uh, you know what? Sorry, dude. Oh. Whoa! See, like, I wonder if that counts as killing him. I kind of killed him and got the item at the same time. Bible equals brown. I will keep that in mind. Oh lord. Lots of nasty stuff in this room. That should be okay though. So, uh, Dragon Quest X, coming out pretty soon. Well, coming out in Japan pretty soon. It comes out in August in Japan. Is anyone excited about that? Aw, oh, I can't bomb my way through the other side of the wall? I mean, it's the first Dragon Quest MMO, which, uh, I don't know. I like, I, I like Dragon Quest games. I would consider myself a Dragon Quest fan, but I'm not an MMO guy. So, uh... I don't know how that would actually work. I mean, it's just for the Wii, and I don't have a Wii, but, I mean, you can get a used Wii for like 60 bucks now. So, if it was good, I might consider getting a Wii to play it. But honestly, I don't know how the Wii... The Wii has really poorly implemented uh, online systems. I don't know how the Wii could even handle an, an MMO. I mean, it's coming out on the Wii U as well, apparently. But, uh... I don't know. Nintendo doesn't have the best track record when it comes to online stuff. I just can't imagine an MMO on a Nintendo console. And I can't imagine a Dragon Quest MMO either. But, uh, I guess we'll see... We'll see what it's like. I don't think it has a release date for the U.S. yet. Duke, keep your distance from these guys. Yeah, I, uh... I always... I always underestimate how nasty those zit dudes can be. Apparently there was a Monster Hunter for game for the Wii that worked pretty well. Oh shit, I can't even get to the card this way, I have to go all the way around. Ugh. Yeah, good question, is the Monster Hunter game a legit MMO? Of course, we, we really don't even know if the Dragon Quest game will be a legit MMO or not. I mean, for all we know, it's a, uh, it's like Guild Wars or something. Well, Guild Wars 1, where it's all instances. I mean, it's hard for me to imagine a Dragon Quest MMO that doesn't use instances. You know what? I'm running low on health. I think I will gamble just a little bit. Secret room. I already got it. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Blade Seeker. I hope you find a good blade. But yeah, I, I, I'm bullish on Dragon Quest X. I don't know if I will ever play it. Is b b bullish is the bad one, right? I think bullish is the bad one and bearish is the good one. Oh, a dollar! That's not what I need. 
Oh, right, there was a slot machine in the secret room as well. I should go after that. I look away for a second. Oh, wait, no, there's not. I look away for a second and you're almost dead. I'm not almost dead. Come on, have a little faith. I mean, in my last uh, playthrough, I got down to half a heart. And I still ended up victorious. Somebody asked earlier if I like black or Asian chicks. And uh, the answer is yes. And white chicks. And... Uh, you know. I don't really discriminate based on those criteria. Do just go to the boss room. I will after I get the death card. Calm down, people. Jesus. I take a little bit of damage and everyone just starts flipping out. I walk over Spice and everyone just starts flipping out. I'll kill the boss with my item so this is in the bag. Yeah, pretty much. And I have a 1-up mushroom. Even if I die, I immediately come back, back to life with full health. So, untwist your panties, folks. It's just Golex. Uh... Q. And... One more hit. And he's dead. Well, if that dude did count as... Uh, if the beggar did count as a kill, I still didn't get the Satan room. Ho-hum. Owned. Yes, Skolex was thoroughly pwned. Man, I have so much better luck when I stream this game than when I play it on my own time. Because my ratio of deaths... Oh, shit! That's a new enemy. My ratio of deaths to wins from the stream is like way better than my ratio in the games that I wasn't streaming. It's like, I don't know. When I'm not streaming, I like, I start thinking too hard, and I overcompensate for things. Uh, welcome to the chat room, Eagle o Gold. I may get Satan if I don't get hit on the mom's heart fight. That'd be cool. It'd be nice to actually get to Satan on the stream. When I'm streaming, I can ask the chat for advice. Yeah, but I, I hardly ever do that, just when there's an item that... The only time I ask the chat for advice is when I'm not sure if I should get an item or not. And yeah, I mean, it certainly helped in this playthrough. Ooh. But, I mean, I think I, think I would do pretty well in this this playthrough regardless. Alright, well, I can't just walk him into the spikes like I usually do without taking damage. So, uh, I'll try to do this the honest way. Actually, the honest way, I'd probably end up taking more damage fuck than I would on the spikes. I hate the doppelgangers. Now, if I use the Bible, I would be floating and I could just float over the spikes. Use bombs to kill him. Uh, that might be a good idea. Alright. You talk me into it. Uh, welcome to the chat room. Sid5594. Glad you can make it. I could have used my cube of meat too. Yeah, that's true. I, I never think to use the cube of meat offensively. Oh shit, I can't get to the boss this way. Hi, brains. So I've expressed my dissatisfaction with the internet in the stream before. I have a love-hate relationship with the internet. On the one hand, it allows for, you know, me to do stuff like this, which is awesome. But on the other hand, there are a lot of dumb people on the internet. 
And one thing that's really been grinding my gears lately is uh, people who incorrectly use the word troll. Oh! Fuck, I didn't see that fly. I thought it was hovering around me. Shit. But uh, a troll is someone who states an opinion in an argumentative way and tries to elicit a response from people. And the word has just really lost all meaning at this point. Like, people use the word troll to mean a joke. Like, uh, I was in uh, a chat room for a stream once, and I made a joke about, uh... We were, we were talking about some game that, like, never came out that was Vaporware or something. And I said, like, you know, coming in 2014 on the Dreamcast 2 or something like that. And someone in the chat room was like, oh, Duke's trolling. And I'm like, no, I'm joking. There's a huge difference between a troll and a joke. Random tangent, it's just something that's, uh, that's irritated me recently. Better make a dash to the casino. Uh, I think I can, I mean, if I can take out Mom's heart just with the Bible, then, uh, this should be a snap. Forgot all about the one-up. Yeah! See, I knew I had the one-up. That's why I wasn't playing as conservatively as I could. Oh, it worked. Very cool. Man, that only took me an hour and 20 minutes. No Sheol, unfortunately. Oh well. This is the last achievement for uh, for beating the game X number of times. What is that? Now I, I have to beat the game at least one more time so I can unlock uh, unlock the stupid character that I'll never use. But just for the sake of completion. Oh, there's another one for your tenth time. See, I thought there was uh. I thought there was an achievement for playing it nine times, and then there was another achievement for, uh, for unlocking that character or, or whatever. But, I mean, I guess it's effectively the same. An upgraded mom heart. Question mark, question mark, question mark is important for the story. Well, okay. Well, I don't want to cut off the stream this early, so uh, I think I will play again. It lives. Oh, I have a different, uh, a different graphic here on the, uh, on the title screen. All right. Well, that was a successful playthrough. Yeah, I don't have the thing that makes you start with the D6 yet. I have to do something ridiculous to unlock that. Playing through as him isn't completely necessary. Yeah, I doubt I will ever do that. It lives, spawns bosses now. I don't like the sound of that. Actually, uh, I will take a brief break. Uh, I have certain needs to attend to, so uh, I will be back in like a minute.
I should have done this before I left, uh, but I'm going to stop the stream and then restart it, just in case I go over two hours on this, because I don't want to have to cut the game off or cut the stream in an awkward place. So uh, wait a sec and then 